Hello and welcome to Safety Tavern's video on hand and power tool safety. Let's get right into it. First, we're going to look at some science. I know everybody rolls their eyes. So I can either throw some, some <laughs> the, the formula for kinetic energy at you, or you can believe in like space magic, right? Or you can believe like I do, which is just, it's basic cause and effect, cause and effect. Okay. Basic cause and effect. If I blindfold you and ask you to drive us to the store, guess what? That's the cause. Guess what the effect is going to be? We're going to hit something, right? Um, if if you take a if you have your football pads on and you go running up to kick a football, you run up, you swing your foot. That's the cause. The effect is you kick the football. Basic cause and effect. Okay, that's about as far as we're going to go as far as into the science of it. But cause and effect. Cause and effect. Now let's take a look at cause and effect in a workplace environment. Let's say you had to run five miles of fence today, okay? That, that okay, it depends on wh what are you doing here, right? Because if, if, if we have a crew that, that this is what they do, they run fence, that's what they've done for 10 years, that's, that's okay, good to go. Their bodies are going to be conditioned for it, most likely. But if you've got guys who last week they were sitting in the office, this week, now they're out running fences, um, you, you, you've literally just put them into a situation where Maybe today they're just going to be sore, but tomorrow if they do it again, and then the next day, and then the next day, and then the next day, man, you're going to have some injured people. You're going to have ergonomic injuries. You're going to have, because their bodies are not used to doing this kind of stuff. And that's not even weighing in the factors of age and body shape, body conditioning. And I've seen some big, huge dudes get hurt from ergonomic injuries because they're not used to doing the work this way. They're not used to using their muscles in this manner plan for the worst. That's not even taking into account the crushing injuries, smashing injuries, um, lacerations, any, that's not taking into account any of that. That's just saying I take a crew and I have them go do something. Ergonomic injuries are a real thing and they take out a lot of our people. Take care of your people, plan for what they're doing. Spread out these, these laborious tasks, spread them out over crews. If you can spread them out. If it has to be this one crew, okay, we're going to do fencing today. And then and then tomorrow we're going to do something else or the next day we're going to do something else also. Then we'll come back to fencing. Um, for electricians, it's wire pulls. Don't plan to do these massive <laughs> 10 people pulling wire thing because there are some situations where we just can't get a wire puller in there. Um, and so don't, don't plan these massive 10 people wire pulls for three weeks straight and then get surprised when you hurt somebody. Plan your workout, okay? Let's take another situation. Let's take this young lady right here. Does she look like she's ready for work? She's wearing a business suit. Looks like she's doing demolition. Now, granted, this is supposed to be an image of a young lady breaking a glass ceiling, which is a cute, it's a good image, but it's a wall, so a glass wall. I don't know. It's, it, it's strange. Um, she doesn't look like she's ready for doing demolition work. Just by the placement of her hands, this, this tells me she hasn't, she's not used to swinging a sledgehammer because she's not preparing for that bounce back. Um, but that's not just it. Now we also have, we have all those same ergonomic injuries, but we also have, yeah, yeah, yeah. We also have the, the glass flying everywhere. And this is where we get into debris in the eyes as well as lacerations all over her body. Man, that stuff can get down to her shirt from what she's swinging right here. Plan for the worst. Let's take another situation. This is a regular railroad crew. Um, what's the worst that could happen? Yeah, they could get ran over by a train. So it's not just what the employees are doing that we're looking at. It's also environmental conditions. Um, perfect example. Let's take another picture. What's the worst that could happen right here? Agreed. The employee could hit his foot or something like that. I would say the worst he could do is he could swing that pick back and stick some 15-year-old girl walking by. He could stick her right in the head. That For me, that'd be the worst case. It wouldn't be me killing myself. It'd be me killing some 15-year-old girl that's just walking by on her way to church or something. And you just took her life out. Rest of her life gone. Because you decided that this cute little cone was enough. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen employees. I've walked up on, on, on mobile crews and I've said, why haven't you barricaded the area? Oh, well, we threw some cones up. I'm like, man, keep the public out. Protect, protect the public from what we're doing. We have training. And let's say a three-person crew. Um, we have training that, that, that tells us don't go by the back of Bob while he's swinging the pickaxe because you're going to get hit. The public doesn't have this training. They don't know what you're about to do. 
Protect our people and protect the general public when you're using hand and power tools. Protect our people. Very simple. Plan for the worst. Next, we actually have tool conditions. And does this tool look like it's ready to be used? No. You know when you get those drill bits and after you use them for a while, you have to start pushing harder and harder uh, into, on, the, on the drill? It's not because your drill's wearing out. It's usually because your drill bit is dull. Keep them sharp. All these these cracks in the hammers, they need to be, you can't have that. Wrenches with cracks in them, I can tell you, every single time I see a wrench with a crack or a broken wrench, I can almost guarantee exactly what happened. And what that did, employee did is he put that wrench on that bolt and then he took what we call a cheater pipe, okay? And put a cheater pipe on the end of that wrench and uh, applied way more force than was ever designed by that manufacturer on that wrench. And that's where you get the broken wrench from. That cheater pipe that you're using, you're not using that tool the way it was designed to be used. Be careful what you're doing, boys and girls. Do not pull that cheater pipe out. Use the tools the way they're designed to be used. This screwdriver, do you think it's supposed to have a rounded tip right here? Nope. And you're going to end up having to put more force, more and more and more of that force on that screw. Use the tools the way they are designed to be used. Take care of your tools. Inspect your tools often. Look at the tool. It's in your hand. Look, inspect the thing. Inspect it. Now, I'm an American. I believe in baseball and apple pie and the Statue of Liberty and the, the, the Screaming Eagle and the American flag. I, I believe in it. And I believe in that we have rights, right? We have certain rules, regulations. We have amendments out there we have constitution we have all kinds of rules and regulations that tell us what we are supposed to do and what we have the right to i can tell you that your company has certain regulations that they have to follow for you as an employee i can also tell you that as a supervisor you have certain regulations you have to follow let's take a look at some of the tool specific regulation 1926 300 alpha all hand and power tools and similar equipment, whether furnished by the employer or the employee, shall be maintained in a safe condition by the employer or the employee. So when I walk up to a job, and I've heard this no less than 100 times, that's my personal tool. I'll walk up and say, hey, what's wrong? Get, let me see that cord right there. Oh, no, no, that's my personal cord. I don't care. It's on the job. It's inspectable. If it's in the back of your truck and your truck's on the job, it's inspectable. Now, if it's in the employee parking lot, different ballgame. But if it's on the job site, it is inspectable. That means all those tools that are in your gang box and you want to tell your foreman, those are my tools. You stay away from my tools. Bubba, they have a responsibility. That supervisor has a responsibility to make sure that your the tools you brought on this job are in good working order. Employees, if your foreman wants to do a tool inspection, you need to be doing it with them. You need to be right there. Now, I'm not saying he can just take all your tools or he, give me your keys to your gang box. Yeah, yeah, that, that's where you get into possession. Um, but you standing right there showing that that supervisor all your tools and your and supervisors actually doing a tool audit on you, that's 100% in keeping with what they are responsible for. They are responsible for all the tools that you're using, even if you bought it yourself. 1926-301 Delta. The wooden handles of tools shall be kept free of splinters or cracks and shall be kept tight in the tool. This is pretty simple. If it's got a wooden handle, man, that thing needs to be in good condition. That means all that duct tape wrapped around that crack, it, it's there's literally an OSHA regulation you're violating. Stop it. 1926-300 Charlie. Employees using hand and power tools exposed to the hazard of falling, flying, abrasive, and splashing objects or harmful dusts, fumes, mists, vapors, or gases shall be provided with the particular personal protective equipment necessary to protect them from the hazard. All personal protective equipment shall meet the requirements and be maintained according to subparts D and E of this part. Pretty simple. If you've got a bunch of stuff that can hurt your people, you got to protect them. you got to take care of them. you got to give them the PPE that's required. PPE is it's just it's just good math, right? You're, you're talking about what? Uh, a $20 pair of gloves that are preventing a two, three, four, ten thousand dollar $10,000 injury? That, that's good math. I can't tell you how many times I've had a supervisor tell me, well, he's going to lose it and I'll have to buy him another pair next month. Uh, okay. How many months do you have to buy gloves before you'd rather have a $10,000 injury? You know, like losing a thumb. Or at least cutting into the employee's hand to where he can't use that hand. 
now you have not only do you have to pay for the uh, all the hospital bills, this employee's on restrictions, so now you have a recordable on your thing, but on, on your on your OSHA log. But now you also have how much work did you lose out of this dude because he can't use his right hand? All over a pair of gloves, or or, or worst case, an eye, or come on. PPE saves lives. It's very, very simple stuff. It saves body parts. There's a reason we don't send soldiers into battle without wearing PPE. It's basic battlefield tactics. The more my soldiers can stand there and fight or run and cover and fight, the, the more likely are we are to win the fight. It's pretty simple. It's it, like the military figured this out. And I'm not even talking about modern day United States America. Yeah. I'm not even talking about American military. We figured this out. A long time ago. How many of y'all would wants to step into a gladiator arena, right, with a sword and no armor? Right? So stop sending our people into the field of battle of construction without PPE. You have to. There's a regulation about it. Employees, it's your right to have personal protective equipment. It's your right. And if your company isn't providing it, you might you know, say something to your supervisor. But if, if they take the stance of... Uh, <laughs> of just go get the work done. You might want to go find a different company. There are really, really, really good construction companies out there that care about their people. This, the company you may be working for may not, may not really care about their people. And if that's the case, leave, man. Go, go, go get with a company that is going to give you the good personal protective equipment. They're going to give you the good tools. When something breaks, no, no big deal. We'll just get it fixed. We'll take it off the line. We'll bring in a new tool. Let's, let's, let's go. Let's keep this going, right? It's good business to take care of our people. I, remember, I'm not even looking at all of the uh, all of the actual heart situations of an employee injury. How much pain is that employee going to go through? How much anguish is him and his family going to go through, or her, or whatever? I'm just I was just talking about the monetary aspects of it. Employees, if your foreman tells you to put on some PPE, you have to put it on. Now, granted, if it's unsafe or it doesn't fit, okay, that's a different ballgame. Or if it's unsanitary, that's a different ballgame. But you need to protect yourself before you do this work, okay? There's regulations out there, guys. Please take care of yourself. 1926-301 Alpha. Employer shall not issue or permit the use of unsafe hand tools. Use the right tool for the job. This is not the right tool for drilling a hole. This is not the right tool for cutting the grass. This is not a table. This is a human being. This is not a hammer. Electricians, your clines are not a multi-purpose tool. Use the right tool for the job. Foreman, again, look at the job, plan it out. Okay, they're going to need all these tools. I need to inspect all these tools to make sure that they're all in good condition. Plan your jobs out. Supervisors, make sure that you're looking at the stuff. Make sure you're looking at what they're going to do. Make sure they have the right tools and make sure that they're all in good condition. Again, supervisor, you have a blanket statement here from OSHA stating... You're not allowed, they're not allowed to use unsafe tools, and it's your, whose responsibility? The employer's responsibility. No modified or custom-made tools. No. Now, this is a general thing that has, from every company I've worked for, as well as every GC that I've worked with, they all have the same rule, which is no custom-made tools, no homemade tools. So that that uh, that wrench that you cut the little that, that you cut a little section out of to make it fit into something, that that tool needs to go off the job site. The, these are unacceptable. You've modified them from their original manufacturer's recommendations and specifications. It's no longer a good tool. Um, talk to if you have any questions with this, talk to the competent person for tools for your company, and they will lay you out better. Now there are sometimes whenever we've had to make a custom tool or do something very very specific for a situation. Um, anytime we ran across that situation, we always had an engineer backing us up with what we were doing, what we were creating. And we always did it with a safety factor of at least two, three, sometimes even times 10, depending on, on what we were doing and how we were doing it. This is a situation that you would need to take. If you believe you're in this situation, take it to the competent person for hand and power tools for your company. But wait a minute, I've got a broken tool. What do I do with it? Well, if it's your personal tool, throw it in the trash or... Go get it repaired by a, a repair technician, right? If it's a company tool, turn it into your supervisor. Makes sense, right?
Now, first, what I tell my people is before you do anything else, once you've identified, okay, this thing is broken, immediately look around for it, for a broken tool tag. Now, we don't always have broken tool tags on our jobs. Get you some danger tape. Almost every construction job site I know, we, we've, we've got danger tape just sitting on the ground. Grab some danger tape and wrap that tool up. That way everybody knows this thing's broken, right? So we tag it. And then depending on what our standard operating procedure is, depending on what my foreman says, either throw it in the trash or turn it into your supervisor and, and they can throw it in the trash. If you don't know what a trash can looks like, that's a trash can. And look, that's a big, big trash can. These are what trash cans look like. So when I walk into your Connex and I say, hey man, what's going on with that tool? And you're like, oh, it's broken. And I say, okay, A, why is it not tagged? And B, what are you doing with it? Oh, we're going to fix it. Are you a repair? Are you, are you certified to work on this tool? Are you okay? Now, electricians fixing extension cords? Okay, depends on what they're doing, but yeah. Um, but you as a regular employee opening up your power drill and no, 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 you, no, stop this. Stop trying to fix your own tools like that. Like, stop. Now let's talk a little bit more about the injuries that can happen. Again, plan for the worst, okay? If I took a situation like this, do you think this employee is planning for the worst? I mean, they're protecting their eyes. That's cool. But as we know, with, with any kind of high rotating, uh, uh, high high vibes or high rotating tools, things can shatter. They, they, can, they can absolutely, I, I've seen cutting blades shatter. And it's terrifying because the things, they fly everywhere. Um, don't you think this employee should at least have a face shield? I mean, we need to be looking at these kind of things. This guy over here, he's using a polishing portion of a grinding wheel. And uh, okay, that looks good, but what about the gloves, right? And this is where plan for the worst. What happens when this happens? What happens when that happens? What plan for the worst, people? Supervisors, look at the tasks that your people are doing. Make sure that they're laid out. And we're not just talking about hand tools. We're also talking about power tools. That includes hydraulic power. That includes pneumatic power, electric power. It's all forms of power. Gravity. There, are, Yes, there are some tools that are gravity tools. Any form of, control, of controlled power, whether it's the human being or one of these other forms of, of energy, plan for the worst, guys. You plan for the worst and you'll dramatically reduce your injury rating. I get, I, I, it's just basic facts. It's basic logic. Plan for the worst. Keep your hands away from the saw. Keep your hands away from the saw. We're going to talk for a minute about bandsaw bounce. Okay, this is a real thing. And bandsaw bounce is where an employee takes the bandsaw and they take the material they're cutting and they take their hand and they, they hold on to the material and they start cutting. Well, the blade kinks and it, and it, and it causes a jerk in the bandsaw. Boom! And they come right down on their hands. I have taken too many employees to the clinic or even to the emergency room because they have used a bandsaw and cut into their hand. Bandsaw bounce. Keep your hands away from the blade. This also goes for chop saws. Any kind of a rotating saw, keep your hands away from the dadgum blade. If there's a chance that something could kink, keep your hands away from it. Tell other people to keep their hands away from the blade. <laughs> I've seen employees... One guy's holding onto the bandsaw. He's got his other hand on the on the top handle of it, and they're cutting down. And some other apprentice is holding on to the piece that he's cutting. Get your hands away from the blade. Basically, I don't care if you got cut resistant gloves. Get your hands away from the blade. Lock that thing down in a vise. Um, do something other than putting our hands right next to a rotating blade or a, a, a spinning blade, whatever. Now, power tools above head or even hand tools. It doesn't matter whether it's a hammer because We've had to, offshore, we had to drive some pins above our head. Oh, man, let me tell you, you have never hurt like the day after you drove. You had to drive some serious pins overhead. Ooh, your lower back is screaming. And guess what? As a supervisor, we need to plan for that. Um, off, uh, on land rigs, we had to drive some giant, giant pins. And you know what we did? We all, and I mean hydraulic mechanics, electricians, the roughnecks, everybody, Every person on that on, on that uh, laydown yard lined up, and we all took about eight swings of the hammer and then handed the hammer off. Right? We spread the work out. Plan for this stuff. Trying to have one roughneck drive a three inch <laughs> and I or, <laughs> sorry, correction, a ten inch pin. This is this is diameter. A ten inch pin into something this long. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a long while. 
Don't want to exhaust your people. You don't want to wear their bodies out. Take care of each other. Especially if you took that situation and moved it up into the air and you're using muscles that you're not used to using, man, you need to start looking at, uh, is there another way we can do this? Now, the picture that we have right here, this is a bandsaw in the air. And there's also something else that, man, I, I, I love my offshore days. And I learned from some, from some really, really, really good people. Some very, very smart, intelligent people. And planning for the worst Dude, we had so many come-alongs rigged up and slings rigged up and stuff rigged up to where when we cut something loose, it would drop about half of an inch, and that's it. Plan for what happens whenever you cut that pipe loose. Plan for what happens. Plan and I'm not even talking about lockout tagout yet. That's a whole different video called lockout tagout. This is just basic. Plan for all that energy to release. Plan for it. Okay. Also overhead when you're using hand and power tools, you may need to upgrade from just basic safety glasses to a face shield, some, some, some other things like that. Here's another one using a jackhammer. Um, this one, A, of course we have the sound, right? And we already covered that in the, in the noise video. We have the, uh, the sound of, of using the jackhammer. That's an easy injury. The next one we have is ergonomic. You ever jackhammered for six hours straight? Man, you're sore. Not just that, but that's the, there's another third injury that comes from high vibrations. Any tool that has high vibrations that you use prolonged, you run the risk of, I believe it's called uh, white noise in your hand, but it's called something like that. And what it is, is your hands start vibrating, right? And if you ignore that, and I mean like, zzz, that it's, it feels like your hands are vibrating, even after you've let go of the jackhammer. And if you ignore that and you keep working, you, you're literally causing damage to the nerve endings in your hands. And that can last a week, two weeks, a month, and it can be very painful to where it hurts to even hold the steering wheel, right? So take care of your people, rotate them often. Um, if they start having any kind of discomfort, get them off that jackhammer, get them doing something else for a while. But again, supervisors, this takes planning. This takes you saying, okay, I know we can get the job done in four hours, but why would I make my people run the risk of hurting themselves doing something that they're not used to doing every day? right? A, what kind of PPE do I need? B, can I spread the, the, the task? If it's, if it's a laborious task, can I spread it out over a whole crew? Can I spread it out over the course of a day? I want you to jackhammer for an hour and then go do something else, right? This takes supervisor planning. Employees, if you feel your body starting to talk to you, stop. And by talking to you, I mean like starting to hurt. You start feeling discomfort. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Let me ask you this. What are you building that's worth your health? Exactly. Take care of yourself. You have a responsibility. You have a right to walk away from this job in the exact same condition that you came to work. And that is, you have that right. And supervisors, take care of your people. Don't, don't give away your employees' rights. Employees, don't give away your rights. Hand and power tool safety is a real thing. And I would argue that the majority of the times when one of my employees got hurt, it's using one of the smaller hand and power tools. It's not even using these big giant things that scare people. It's using these small little tools, a hammer, a screwdriver in a pocket. Yeah. Screwdrivers and pockets. We had a dude who stabbed himself in the in the in the in the upper back, well, the middle back, because he leaned back on a screwdriver. <sighs> Take care of yourself. Keep your tools out of your pockets. Use the tools the way that they're designed. Don't make custom tools. Don't try to fix your own dadgum tools. If it's broke, it's broke. And plan for the worse. Plan for that uncontrolled release of energy. I hope this video finds you well, and I'll see you in the next one.